Hey everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. I am so excited you're here with me today. Um, first, I want to show you the supplies that I am using. I've got a lot of supplies I'm using today. Um, I've got the Eastern Promise stamp set, the uh, Welcome Easter stamp set. I've got the Stitched Sweetly dies, Stitched So Sweetly, um, Stitched Rectangle dies, and I want to show you really quick how I made the frame for the shaker card. I stacked two of the rectangle dies together, taped them down to a piece of cardstock, ran them through the big shot, and this is my result. I ended up with this really cool frame, and you can make these frames as thick or as thin as you want, depending on the two dies that you choose to use. So we're going to start assembly, and you can find the measurements for all the items on the screen, um, and we're going to start stamping and assembling this card. So I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink to ink up these flowers from the Eastern Promise Eastern <laughs> the Easter Promise stamp set. And then I'm going to color them with um, Mango Melody. I think it's Mango Melody, Daffodil Delight, and Granny Apple Green. So um, these are crocus. I actually had to contact somebody to find out what they were. And so um, I looked up some pictures of them on the interwebs and decided what I was going to um, color them as. It turns out that crocus come in lots of colors. They come in purple and yellows and even white. And um, so I already had made a, one card using the purple and I decided to use the uh, mango melody to to make these yellow so just kind of a fun um, fun flower to color I kept with the darker shades at the bottoms of the flower and anywhere that the petals overlap and then I went in with the light mango melody uh, in the other areas and then I went in with light daffodil delight at the very very tips which then give a lot of dimension to these flowers. I used light pumpkin pie for the stamen in the center. I went back over with my dark mango melody in the areas that I wanted the darkest just to give a little bit more contrast. I wasn't really seeing the contrast that I wanted so that's what I did there. And then I took the great dark granny apple green and put it in the areas that would be shaded or darker and then went over it with the light granny apple green. And that pretty much is the coloring. Now, I decided to decorate the inside of this card too, um, which I normally don't do. And so when I did that, I did some down and dirty coloring. So you'll see that here in a little bit. And down and dirty coloring is great. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I've got a piece of Sahara sand cardstock, cut it four and a quarter by 11. I have a Stampin' Up! window sheet that I'm gluing with Tombow glue down to my frame. This will keep the um, sequins obviously in the shaker area and that is the goal with any shaker card. You don't want your sequins escaping. So I've cut this piece of acetate or window sheet down to size and I'm just going to glue it down. I like to let these things sit for a little bit because um, especially with something like a window sheet or acetate, it tends to be have a slick surface. So it's really easy for the frame to get jostled or move, um, and that's not a good thing. I'm using foam adhesive strips on top of the acetate, lining it up along the wall of that frame, and this is going to create the um, container, I guess you could say, for the shaker bits. Um, and I'm just going around trimming it at each end where it stops, adding um, the adhesive again and continuing on and I end up needing another strip and so I really love these foam adhesive strips that Stampin' Up! sells. You can purchase them in my online store if you don't have any. Um, the great thing about them is if you take the release paper off the back before you start maneuvering them, if you have a round shaker window, um, it will go in a circle really easily. So really, I really, really love these um, foam strips. One thing um, 
I want to mention is if you do need any Stampin' Up! products, you can purchase them in the link below the video. I also always have them listed over on my blog, which has additional photos. If you want to see pictures of that purple shaker uh, card I made, you can check that out over there as well. So I flipped this over and I am gluing my decorative piece to the front of the acetate now and flipping it back over, letting it sit and set up and dry. I don't want to jostle that around and move it and have it get messed up. So I went ahead and decided to move on to another piece of my card. So this piece is Whisper White and it's cut at four by five and a quarter. I am stamping up this uh, crocus again and stamping it in the corner of the cardstock. And then this is where I'm going to do that down and dirty coloring I talked about. You will see I literally take um, the Dark Mango Melody, I go in and I just color the entire flower and don't even worry about shading. Um, the reason I did it like this on the inside of this card is actually to show you that you can still get really beautiful coloring and really beautiful finished product without doing a bunch of crazy shading. Now I did decide to leave a little bit of room at the end of some of these flowers and I used the Light Mango Melody. I, I'm sorry, the Light Daffodil Delight. I skipped the Light Mango Melody altogether and I blended it into the dark. So I did get a little bit of shading but nothing crazy. I kept it incredibly simple because I think one of the most um, sad things is that people avoid using these types of markers because they see people use them all with fancy shading and they don't have to be used that way. They can simply just be used as a coloring element where you just color. Um, here I colored all the stems and leaves just with granny apple green and called it good and didn't do any shading at all. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink to stamp my sentiment and this says, um, may the promise of his wonderful gift fill your heart with peace and joy. So really nice sentiment to go on the inside of this card. I've only made a handful of Easter cards. I generally don't send massive amounts of Easter cards, but there's always a few people that I like to send an Easter card to um, or give them give an Easter card to. So these two cards are pretty special. Um, I love shaker cards. I probably will send one of these to my cousin in Montana. She really likes shaker cards. She thinks they're really fun. In fact, she told me at Christmas, I better get a shaker card because um, she went with me on the Stampin' Up! trip. Um, and they released on the Stampin' Up! trip all of our holiday stuff earlier in the summer. And when they did that, <laughs> Um, this was last year and when they did that one of the things they released were those cool shaker domes and she was like I better get a card made with one of those so she did she got a card made with a shaker dome okay what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a trough or tunnel to trap my sequins in so that they don't get caught behind that solid piece where nobody's going to see them. There's really no point in putting the shaker bits back there. Um, honestly, like no one's going to see them if they go behind this. So I created this little trough so that all the sequins would get caught in there and people would still be able to see them when I shake them. These shaker bits are clear um, sequins. I got these online somewhere. I honestly don't remember where. I have a sequin problem. I do have a sequin addiction. I've got them um, by the cartfuls basically in a drawer. I have so many and so I just opened that drawer and grabbed some that I thought would look nice with this. Unfortunately there weren't any Stampin' Up! ones that I felt like would complement this card really well. So I did grab some out of my random stash. Um, I You can find sequins at anywhere. I mean, I found, I found them at the grocery store before. So um, if I find some that I really like, I just grab them and, and throw them in my bag and I have them then to do fun shaker cards with and stuff like that. So I'm removing the backing here very slowly and carefully because 
if I jostle this, it's going to cause those sequins to jump out of the trough and go where I don't want them to. So I'm kind of being very gentle and careful in removing all of the release paper, holding one hand down on the piece and then pulling the release paper off. The next step is to mount this onto the card base and because I'm doing it this way and I can't really see, I have to kind of line it up essentially as I go. So I'm using my grid lines to line up that shaker bit or shaker panel to add to the front. And you can see here, it is not perfectly centered um, up and down or side to side. And that is okay. That is why it is handmade and not Hallmark, baby. Um, it's totally fine if your stuff has a little bit of an error or something. I mean, there's just no good way. The only other way I could have gotten that shaker panel down perfectly would have been to cut a separate piece of Sahara sand, add it to the back, and then add that to the front of the card. And I totally could have done that. That There's nothing wrong with that. That would have been perfectly fine. Um, honestly, it's just a time saver not to do it. I got these new um, carts to, or uh, containers to hold my um, embossing powders in because I didn't like how small my other ones were and these ones are perfect. I got them on Amazon. I linked to them below the video. So if you do want to get some of these, um, they are the Systema Locking Lid um, Tupperware. Um, there is a link below the video if you want them. Here is the other card that I made. I just love how it turned out. Um, I feel like the coloring on this one definitely has more contrast. I used dark and light Highland Heather and light purple posy for the very tips so that you would get a lot of contrast. And then I used Highland Heather cardstock stamped in Versamark ink and, um, and added that to the panel like I'm doing here with the Mango Melody. So this is Mango Melody cardstock. I have stamped in Versamark ink, heat embossed, and now I'm just cutting down that um, sentiment to add it to the front of the card. That that you just saw there was my mini cutter. I was able to purchase that during the demonstrator pre-order, but you can get it for free if you purchase the Stampin' Up! starter kit. So interestingly enough, um, the Stampin' Up! Starter Kit is the best deal for your money if you're looking to place an order. Um, I would highly recommend purchasing the Starter Kit because you get to choose $125 in product. You only pay $99 plus tax. Shipping is free on the Starter Kit. And then you get that free mini cutter and this is only good till March 31st. You get the free mini cutter, a free stamp set, and a free pack of sampler designer series paper. My last step here is just adding that Wink Estella to these um, flowers. I know we really didn't get a chance to have story time today. Um, there was just a lot to this card and I wanted to make sure that I shared with you how to make it. So hopefully next time we will have some story time. I did decide to stamp the Happy Easter sentiment um, from, the, from the stamp set in Mango Melody on top of the envelope. Stampin' Up! envelopes take ink really well and after stamping this twice I realized that my reinker was plumb out of ink so or my ink pad so I had to get reinker to reink my Mango Melody and so what I did instead was just grab my Daffodil Delight um, ink pad because I knew it did not need to be reinked and I went ahead and stamped in that. It really doesn't matter. It's just as long as it's a yellow, it's going to look nice. So I went ahead and stamped that and that matches that one. And then I've got the purple to match the purple card. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Click the circle with my face in it to subscribe. Click either other of the other videos you see here on the screen to watch those. And I will catch you in the next video. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.